the IBM PS2 Model 50. Since there's plenty of information on the internet about this system, I'll skip the mundane and repetitive steps on startup and operation and move quickly to the more interesting aspects of this particular machine. Purchased with its sibling, a Model 3286, it shows signs of being stored in a damp location. A restoration is in order. Here is a badge leading me to hope that there really is some kind of CPU upgrade inside. Moisture is not a kind neighbor to any computer, but the inside held up surprisingly well. You don't see aluminum foil in a computer very often. It really does come apart without tools. Cleanup was quick and easy. Motherboard out, plastic base washed and dry, power supply receives some compressed air. Both floppies disassembled, clean and reassembled, but alas, one refused to work and the other wouldn't boot every time. No boot, boot, no boot, boot, no boot, boot. Now I'm getting dizzy. So I set out to make a new drive work in its place. Mix in some searching, some reading, some circuit tracing and probing, and sprinkle with a PC clone as a willing comparative subject, and voila, a solution is born. The floppy riser added a level of complexity to my initial mock-up. Even and odd pins were reversed and cramped the drive bay, but it did work. I removed the riser board, which simplified the cabling and finalized my adapter. The foil was to replace the broken contact on the original battery, which was dead anyway, so I added a AA battery holder and double-sided taped it under the drive tray. The hard drive was nearly gone. I copied what I could with abort, retry, fail being thrown at me like a rapid-fire game. Later an attempt at a startup disk, Control a Format disk was the last straw. I found a Trantor T260 MCA SCSI host adapter online and added a power harness from an old supply and an IBM slash Connor SCSI hard drive. Next is to mount the floppy. I used thin aluminum that could be folded on a sharp edge to form a three quarter inch spacer. This was mounted to the drive sled and the drive to the spacer. Once the startup disk, the ADF files, the configuration, the hard drive, and DOS were playing nice together, it was time to try out the CPU upgrade. The Intel Snap-in 386 upgrade, this is just a picture I found online somewhere, was really installed in place of the 286. My first round of benchmarks showed the CPU at about a 286 megahertz level. Luckily the snap-in driver was one of the files that successfully copied, so I added it to the config.sys file. Here are some screenshots. Performance was near where you would expect. I also substituted in a 286 and the performance was exactly like the PS2 Model 60 shown. The finished system with blank plates over the unused bays.